I've used just about every to-do app under the sun. And the one that I keep coming back to that has the best balance of the features, design, and accessibility is Todoist. And so today I wanna share with you 10 main reasons as to why I think Todoist is the best project and task app for most people. But first, I wanted to invite you to join our newsletter. If you wanna stay up to date with what's going on here at Effective Plus, get insights into some of the best productivity tips, tricks, and mindsets, subscribe to the newsletter down in the description below. The way that I see the landscape that Todoist fits in is there are three really big buckets. There's the traditional app landscape of Todoist, Tick Tick, Things, OmniFocus, and even apps like Apple Reminders. Apple Reminders has gotten a lot of attention over the last few years that puts it at rough feature parity with apps like Todoist. These are your traditional project and task management style apps. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list. Then there's the all-in-one apps that have been getting a lot of attention in the last three to four years, such as Notion, Capacities, and PKM tools like Obsidian and LogSeq. These tools offer the ability to manage tasks and projects, but it's not their primary focus. Their main focus is all about capturing information, organizing it in some sort of a structured way, and even potentially connecting it to other pieces of information inside of the system. And then the last are team apps. These are apps like Asana and ClickUp that were built from the ground up to function as a team project management software, but because they often offer generous free tiers, individuals use them as well, depending upon their needs. In looking at the entirety of this list of apps and categories, Todoist is one that really stands out to me, and there are 10 big reasons why I think this app in particular is the best choice for most people who want to manage projects or tasks. Let's get into those reasons. First and foremost, Todoist is one of the only apps that is truly cross-platform. I'm not always on one platform. I'm not always in the Apple ecosystem. Sometimes I've been on Windows. Sometimes I've used Linux. And Todoist has options for all of those platforms, including a very robust web client. So if we look here on Todoist's website, you can see you can get Todoist on your desktop as an app. Again, every platform. You can get it on Android. You can get it on iOS. Your wearable devices, Apple Watch and others. Browser extensions where you can just open it up in Chrome and then email add-on. As someone who primarily works on my personal devices in the Apple ecosystem, I do also appreciate in this regard that Todoist has been a good iOS citizen. If there are new features launched with the latest version of iOS, Todoist is usually one of the first apps to adopt some of those. Second, I think Todoist is quite beautifully designed. Things 3 is a really unique example in this regard because this design is years old now, but it looks like it came off the shelf just yesterday. It's a very, very well done design for the Apple ecosystem, but Todoist, in my mind, is very well designed as well. It's simple, its layout is clean, They've recently updated some of the look and feel of it, the iconography. It's really simple on the surface, but if you press into it a little bit, there's a lot of complexity that's well designed into the app. So for example, uh, if you want to click on a task, you have everything laid out in here if you want to use all these features such as the projects, due date, priority, labels, reminders, and uh, even location, subtasks, comments, and so forth. But you do not have to use all of those. This is just one simple way that they put layers in the user interface design. The third reason is Todoist's rapidly improving feature set. There was a period of time with Todoist where feature development was pretty slow. They were struggling with getting their Windows 10 app out and up to par. It was kind of a different app altogether in many respects. They had a, a really big redo of their foundational aspects in the app to get it to run more quickly and at scale to get better performance out of it. Yeah, probably within the last six to 12 months at Todoist where they're starting to develop really new and interesting things. They're launching new features 
basically every couple of weeks. So you can see here, they, they just launched. Uh, reminders are available for everyone. They used to be a pro only feature, but now they're available in limited capacity for people who are using the app for free. Uh, they now have a calendar view that's integrated into the today view, so you can use it for planning your day out. You can also sync your calendar into Todoist so that you can do time blocking around your meetings, which is really handy. It, it only supports Google Calendar at this point, but I'm sure they'll add more in the future. Um, these are just a couple of examples. The other thing that's really interesting too that I will call out here is that Amir, who is the CEO of Todoist, leaked two months ago from the recording of this video that they're looking at implementing both a date and a deadline on the task. This is one of the most requested features for Todoist that has kept it from being on par with apps like Things and OmniFocus. In those apps, you can set a start date on a task so that it doesn't show up on a list until the day you're ready to start it. Uh, it but in Todoist, you can only use the one scheduled date feature as either the due date or the day that you're actually working on it. Separating these two dates out will be extremely helpful. Fourth is the flexible philosophy of the app, the way that it's designed to use. Many apps like Things uh, are very opinionated. This is just a screenshot of it, but you can see in Things it has an inbox and today and upcoming, anytime, someday. Uh, you can have areas in Things and projects in Things, and you can have sections in there. But the way things is constructed is much more tightly oriented to maybe more of a strict adherence to getting things done and even more so in an app like OmniFocus where the app was basically built around the getting things done system. Todoist, on the other hand, has all of the same capabilities there for you but the way that they structure projects are a little bit more ambiguous. You can use projects as an area, you can use projects as a folder that doesn't have anything in it. So for example, if I create another project here and I just say, this is for create Todoist YouTube video, I'll add it to my list here quick. And then I can actually put it underneath this, my work one and indent it so that this project becomes the folder. This doesn't have to have any tasks in it. And then this can be just the list of projects under here. So with this, you can use Todoist to organize really any kind of productivity system that you wanna use. You can use Todoist for getting things done. It has labels that you can use for context. You can use filters to develop really any sort of list of projects or tasks that you want to cut just like you would in things or specifically in OmniFocus. You can also use it for the Paris system. So you can have your projects as a main folder up here and every project that you're working on up here, you can have areas that you have tasks in, or you can use an organizational system like I've been experimenting with, which is the now next later system, which uses mainly only root projects. And each one of these would be either a board or a list of things that are currently on my mind that I'm trying to move forward or next would be things that are up next on the plate. Number five is a reasonably generous free plan. I typically recommend people to start off on the free plan just to see if the app works well for you. I will say if you're gonna use a more traditional getting things done style system, you may wanna consider just upgrading to Pro right away because if you're using projects actually in the projects bar over here, you can only create five on the free plan, which may be a little limiting for some people. A workaround for that is that you can create a project over here as a task. So for example, I have this one, explore e-ink tablets for the channel. This is more so of a project. I can track this as a project here and then I can add subtasks to that. Um, but again, it just depends on how you wanna structure your system and work around the limitations. There's smart quick add, flexible lists and board layouts. You don't get access to the calendar view unless you upgrade to Pro. You do get three filters, which is nice. Uh, if you're gonna use more than three, you'll have to upgrade as well. A week of activity history, and you can integrate your email calendar more all on the free plan. So again, it's pretty generous. We've touched on this a little bit here as well, but Todoist does a really good job of getting the basics right. Adding tasks is super easy. Uh, you can just click the button, add a task and say, uh, record next video on the Supernote Nomad. 
So you can, I've added the task there. I can add in some subtasks as well to say, get a super note nomad. Uh, by the way, uh, the user who recommended that to me on the last video, thank you. Um, you can indent those um, tasks there and then you can move them into projects. You can add dates, as I mentioned, the due date. Uh, this is really nice here too because it's got a really clever date picker uh, and your today view is really uh, quite organized as well. You can actually change the views in here too, the different groupings. So if you wanna group it by none or by due date or priority, by project, by workspace, which is we'll get to in just a minute, um, you have those capabilities for you. Todoist does a great job at the basics, but also Todoist does an excellent job at more advanced features. One of those which is natural language processing. If you're creating a task, for example, and say I need to mow the lawn, you can just continue typing and adding a ton of information to it. So I want to mow the lawn on Saturday. So I'm just gonna type Saturday. And you can see that it automatically picks up the date and it'll show as tomorrow. If this is a priority two task, it's not the top of my list, but it's pretty close. I can hit, I could just type in P2 and it'll automatically notice that it is priority two. If this is a home oriented task, I can just put an at symbol if I wanna put a context on it for home and so forth. If I would like to add it to my home projects list, I can use the pound symbol and I can go down and select home. I'll hit add task and you see it does not come into the inbox because it's already added to a project. You can see it's up at the top. It also has advanced features like board. So if I hit shift V on here or just go up to the view and change board, I now have a Kanban style board that I can work on. I can move mow the lawn into a new section such as household tasks, just to keep track of it. I'll move it over there and you can add as many as you want. You can also set this up as a traditional Kanban board with to do, doing and done. But do be aware that if you want to complete the task and done, you still have to manually check it off. Number eight is keyboard shortcuts. I am a fan of apps that are designed by engineers, but also well-designed aesthetically because engineers often want to make sure that you can do what you want to do in the fewest key presses possible. So if I hit uh, the question mark key here, or shift backslash, uh, you'll get a list of keyboard shortcuts and literally anything you want to do, you can do straight from the keyboard inside of Todoist. Uh, if you're a Vim user, which is a command line based text editor, many of these commands will feel familiar to you or at least the way that they work together. Number nine is Karma. Karma is really a tiny bit of gamification inside of Todoist that for some of us that like to have little dopamine hits as we're moving forward and getting things done in the day, this is just an added little extra boost. You can set goals for the number of tasks that you want to complete on a given day or in a given week. And when you hit that goal, you gain karma points. And karma has a number of levels all the way from beginner down to enlightened that you can gain, gain karma points through adding tasks, completing tasks on time, using advanced features, reaching goals, and achieving streaks by meeting your daily and weekly goals on a regular basis. Again, there's really no point to this other than just a little bit of gamification to keep the momentum going, to feel like you're getting a little reward in the process. And while this might not be for everyone, for some people, it is really powerful. And lastly, Todoist is collaborative in nature. While Todoist was built for an individual managing their projects and tasks, you can create special workspaces inside of Todoist that contain all of the projects that you are sharing with other people, either your team at work or anyone else that you're inviting into that workspace. You can share tasks, assign tasks, and track comments and discussions back and forth on those specific tasks as well. Again, I love the fact that Todoist is built from the perspective of an individual using it and not some team-focused app that is just shoehorning an individual use case into it. So these are 10 reasons why I think Todoist is the best project and task app for most people. 
most importantly of which is that it's available everywhere. It has a simple user experience that's well designed, but it has advanced capabilities that if you're willing to learn a little bit more about the tool, you can access them very easily and use them powerfully versus a tool like OmniFocus where it is very complex from the get-go and the tools that are available while powerful are really time consuming to use appropriately. Todoist has many of those same features, but the way that they are designed, I think really just brings it ahead of the pack for most people, both in terms of its simplicity to use and also the power that it has available to it as you scale into your productivity workflow. One of the main challenges that most people have when they're starting using a tool like Todoist is how to organize it. You might go down the road of getting things done or the para method. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a new way that I'm experimenting with how to organize my tasks and projects inside of Todoist called the now, next, later method. And if you're interested in learning more about that, check out the video over here.